Hello, everyone. Today is Thursday, January 14th, 2021. This is the week and charts. I'm sure I thank all you guys and girls for attending tonight. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. Looks like more and more people are finding the show. If you're watching this on YouTube, if you go to daylander.com slash webinar, even if the date's a little old on that page, the link is still good, or the link will point to the current show. So what are we talking about? Well, this is actually a slide from two years ago, <laughs> but uh, or that, that part of the slide, uh, obviously we're in a, a new bull leg or another bull leg, but we are going to talk a lot about market conditions in a little while. And, you know, if you guys want, what I could do once again is we could do a little walk through on the database and maybe see if we could find some IPOs like we did last week. And there's two that I said I would buy last week and I actually bought. And that's the beautiful thing about my educational business. It forces me to practice what I preach. And we'll get to that when we get to the live charts. So I started working on these trading resolutions and started updating the slides. And it's a lot bigger project than I thought it would be. So we're only going to get through about three of them tonight but over the next few weeks we're going to pick up the rest of those and maybe pick up more in sessions i want to give me i want to give myself i want to give myself sounds like a i certainly want to peaky blindness <laughs> i want to give myself enough time to maybe look at some ipos and then spend a lot of time in the market and there's a lot of things that are important for us to be paying attention to right now so we'll get through several of these and then we'll jump into the the charts before we do all that, there's this flame screen. As you know, you can lose my training. Or, as I often sum it up, borrowing a line from Greg Morris, all predictions about the future, and a lot of stuff can happen between now and then. All right, 21 trading resolutions for 2021. Is it just me, or is, is last, last year hindsight is 2020? Huh? I think it is. Thanks for everybody. All right, number one. I will only take trades when conditions are conducive to my methodology. And there are some exceptions here. For a trend follower, it means that the big blue arrow is pointing higher, as it is now. And those exceptions are, unless I think I have the mother of all setups, or B, I have a decent looking stock that I could trade in lieu of conditions. Last year, when I went in, or when I was looking at these slides from last year, I should say, so way back in January of last year, right around this time, the market conditions were kind of iffy and sideways and choppy and a little bit lower, but just really wasn't a whole lot out there. And then I found a gold stock that I liked, AUY. And then what I want to do in a few minutes is I want to show you when we went through a period last fall, late last fall, where there really wasn't a whole lot to do. And then all of a sudden, what happened? We started finding setups. So that would make more sense. In just one minute and c would be i have a possible transitional setup that could be leading the market sometimes the market might be in a longer term downtrend or bottoming out longer term or going sideways or whatever and then energy stocks begin setting up or metals and mining or some sort of value-based area begins to bottom out and becomes the first momentum off the bottom and that's when these transitional setups can really kick in now, if we go in and look at the market going back to last fall, as I said a minute ago, it was looking pretty iffy. Things were beginning to roll over. And if you go in and look at the service archives, www.daveglander.com slash archives, and I promise I'll get an update on those soon for those who aren't on the service and, and are not looking at the current ones, I'll get you I'll get you up to about a week or so ago. Anyway, if you go back then, go back to then last September, you'll see that we did have a few shorts on, and if memory serves, they didn't work out so hot. We ended up with a period of time where there really wasn't a whole lot to do. Now, looking at the market, if you look back in time, you could see on a net net basis, the market hadn't made a whole lot of forward progress. And if you look at the bottom of this chart, you'll notice that the market began to meander back and forth around its 30 day EMA. Okay. So if you're looking at this indicator here, this is a Landry light indicator. And it counts the number of bars above the 30 EMA. As long as it looks like this, that's a good market, okay? And even if it pulls back just for a day or two or three or four, that could actually be a setup for a new leg higher. But when it's green and red and green and red and green and red, back and forth, the market's getting a little choppy. And, of course, you could always, again, look at where the market is and draw a line backwards in time and see how far you can go back and intersect 
that price. So on a net net basis, even though the market traded higher, it really hasn't gone anywhere in quite a while. Now, during this period of time, I went back and looked at the service archives one day at a time, and there were no setups for this week or so of trading. There just wasn't anything that I thought was worthwhile doing, plus the market didn't look so hot. And then on this day here, even though the market looked a little questionable after a week of saying, don't do anything, I found a stock called U. And then a few days later, I found a stock called CRSR. And then a couple of days later, I found a setup, actually about another week later, there was another week with no setups, or no new setups at least. I found a stock called Flux, then AMWL the next day. And then a few days later, APOB. Well, the market's still a little iffy, but the database was producing a few setups. And this IPOB is one of those silly Spock stocks. That's hard to say three times fast. So maybe this was foreshadowing a little bit here. But what's interesting is none of these three actually triggered. So if we look at this period of time and then add in the next couple of weeks of trading, once again, there was no setups. So let's take a look at this period where the market was trying to find its way. So out of all of that trading, 31 trading days, which is about two and a half months, roughly. There were only two positions that actually triggered. So for two and a half months, you just put on two positions. Now, I don't know exactly how many in the open portfolio. We'll count them in one second. But there's uh, nearly a dozen, I think. And I was counting my positions earlier, right before I went live and right before I recorded my week, my uh, trading service tonight. And I noticed I had 25 stocks. <laughs> That's the most I ever remember since I've been doing this. And hopefully, I hate to use the, hope, use the word hope, but hopefully I'm able to bang out some more initial profit targets tomorrow and pull some cash off the table. I pulled a lot of cash off the table today, but then at the end of the day, I found an IPO and I had to buy it. And I apologize for not putting it out in the group. I've just been slammed lately. Usually I'm pretty good about putting those out. So anyway, if we go forward from there, then we had ALGM, then we had CPE, and then we had ASO. So you can see we're starting to get a few setups as the market is beginning to move higher. And notice we got some green down here beginning to build. We got 20 bars of Landry light, which is a good thing. And you could look for, if you wanted a trading system, you could look for like 10 to 20 bars of Landry light and wait for a pullback to 30 EMA. That's what I used to call a daylight pullback. I think in my, oh man, dating myself here. Third book? <laughs> I often say third and last, but I do have another one in my head I've been writing. So I've been writing actually on paper a little bit too. You bought YSG, didn't you? No, but you're close. I almost bought YSG. Wait a minute. Hang on. Which one was it? Yeah, it was a, yeah, it was YSG. It was. Good job. All right, did did you bring it up in the group, John? Because hopefully somebody else was able to uh, to get in on that. I did buy YSG, very good. I was getting confused with another one, yeah. And on this day here, we had Lou, okay? So you could see that the setups, we're starting to get more and more setups as the market is moving more and more in our favor. And then there was about a week in time where there were actually no new setups. There were still setups, some of these, which hadn't triggered just yet. And then Lou did not trigger. Now, let's go in and take a look at what happened with those setups. So we didn't do anything for a long, long, long time. And the people who just signed up for my trading service are like, this guy never does anything, you know? <laughs> people now are like, hey, knock it off. That's enough. <laughs> anyway, so the entry was here. The stop was down here. And the initial profit target was up here. And we take a look at what happened. It began to rally, and within a few days, a couple days actually, or the next day, I should say, it hit the initial profit target, and some of you guys might remember, I did this presentation a while back with this one that said, thank you, and then I got stopped out, and I was like, F you. And this thing, of course, went on to, to just do fantastic. Unfortunately, it happens. All we got was a little piece out of it. 
better than the poke in the eye. And then the market went on to make much, much higher levels or went on to trade at much, much higher levels. So the other one that set up was CRSR. This was a first deep retracement. Great little IPO pattern. That's when you have a stock that rallies up, an IPO that is, and has a fairly deep retracement. It's a little hard to see based on the scaling, but if you were to just back that chart way out to when it first set up, it was a deep retracement. And there it is in the portfolio. I don't know if you saw that. CRSR to buy it at 20 and a risk of three. So that means our stop is at 17. Add three to the entry and initial profit target of 23. So let's show that on a chart. Entry, stop. Initial profit target is up here. And let's take a look at what happened. So it banged out of the initial profit target and notice that our trailing stop at that point in time is brought up to break even. And then we caught a really nice ride in this one. And this one so far really hasn't come back with a lot of vigor. So I'm not too concerned about getting stopped out of this one. But this was a pretty good ride. I think it was about 100% ride because we were buying at, what, 20? And we got stopped out at 40 and change. So much better than a poke in the eye. And here's ALGM. Now, a little bit more obvious here on the first deep retracement. And again, you're looking for an IPO to come public, have a really sharp rally, and then pull back. And if memory serves, and I think I said, yeah, I definitely did trade this one. I traded this one twice. I actually bought on this day here, flipped out some shares somewhere in here, got stopped out, and then put it on the trading service as a hot IPO pullback or first deep retracement. Okay, I had it as an FDR, first deep retracement. And there are your parameters, a little bit more volatile than a CRSR, at least at the time. So we had a four point risk, which means entry at 24, stop at 20. So it's just 20 minus 24 minus four is 20. And the initial profit target, you add this to the entry. By the way, if you go to member resources on the dashboard of the members page, davelander.com slash members, you can download a sample sheet and put your own trades in for what it's worth. So the buy was up here. Stop down here, initial profit target up here, and let's see what happened. So it rallied up, it banged out that initial profit target, and then began to meander a little bit. So our stop was brought up to 23 and three quarters. Now, we didn't know that that would become a base above that level, but it did. And if we fast forward and take a look at the stop, you could see that it based for a long, 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 long time. And I might be a little off in this stop because it actually came really close to stopping us out around 23 and three quarters. And then it ran up about 13 points since then. So, so far, so good. So the point I was trying to make is we sat around and didn't do anything for a while. Not that I can guarantee that sitting around and then the next three setups or four setups are going to be fantastic. But as you can see, sometimes you just have to sit on your hands. And so far, so good. Knock on wood, which I'm actually doing. been doing that a lot lately. It's doing okay. We're up 43% on that second loaf. And remember last week we talked about free free rolling, meaning that you get the swing trade out. Usually we're going for around 1% and on the first loaf or $1,000 on 100K and then some multiple thereof on the second loaf. And right now we're up about 2.5% up about on the second loaf. And you can see 43% gain here, CPE 140, 133% or 134%. So, so far so good on those. Now, I was hoping, and I know you should never use the word hope, but I was hoping this week, because last week we talked about free rolling, meaning establishing free positions, so to speak, barring overnight gaps, you get stopped out, you get stopped out at a profit or worse, at a scratch, okay? And if that doesn't happen, you have a chance to trail the stock for a long, long time, and maybe, just maybe, you're sitting in a stock up 134%, like this one here, okay? Hopefully I didn't jinx that. <laughs> I'm being a little superstitious tonight, right? So anyway, 
it didn't quite officially hit the ARLP, the, uh, I'm sorry, the initial profit target on ARLP, which was 589, but it came fairly close today. And as I told my peeps, most of which are here tonight, if it gets fairly close, don't split hairs on this one, okay? Especially if it hits that target after just being in the stock for a few days. And we're looking for a home run on the second loaf, okay? And roughly about 1% on the first loaf. Now, this portfolio is tracked mechanically, even though I did exit ARLP, half of my shares today, because I figured it was close enough, within four cents or so. I actually trailed the stop higher and got stopped out when it was pretty close, just to let you know how I did that. So as hoped, I did not get another free position as far as the mechanical portfolio is concerned, but for all intents and purposes, it was close enough for government work. Now, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and I'm going to count ARLP as seven, even though mechanically, technically, it did not hit it. So seven out of, let's see, this will be eight, nine, 10, 11. So seven out of 11 positions have banged out the initial profit target. So we have seven free positions on, so to speak, or we're free rolling on those. So again, superstitious tonight, knock on wood. You know, before a run like this would go to my head, but I got my ass handed to me last year for a while. And luckily we've had this run that got me out of that sling. But I've learned a lesson and I've really been tempered in this run. And that's the thing too, you know, I admit a lot of mistakes and I think it's important because no matter what level you're at, I think you're you're still prone to some mistakes. You're still human and you still have to guard against these things. You have to guard against your ego and not getting too full of yourself. All right, number two, and again, we're just gonna go through three tonight. I will carefully plan all trades ahead of time and then work to diligently follow that plan. Plan your trade and trade your plan. Easier said than done. Although I, I do have to say, when I look at my 25 stocks in my portfolio, I have the, how many did I just say, 11? I have those 11 that are in the service or held in a separate watch list, okay? and that list is very easy to manage, okay? I'm not gonna say that I don't drop an F-bomb here and there on that, but as far as knowing what to do, I just look at the service spreadsheet because the night before I made a plan and I published that plan and you guys see the plan and now I have to follow the plan because if I don't, not that I'm gonna report every trade or show you every trade, but I re report quite a few of them and nearly every one I report from the service at least lately, especially with the, with, now that I'm doing a stock chart show too, I'm showing more and more of all the stuff that I'm actually doing, believe it or not, I'm actually doing this stuff, you know? <laughs> anyway, it does, it is a lot easier to follow those trades and it's like, I find myself in these other trades, it's easy to get in, but if you're not going in with a full plan, it's a lot harder to to manage that trade. And I find myself kind of, because with some of these, it's like a market on close type of order. I don't sit around and do the math that quick. I just kind of eyeball it and say, okay, it's uh, you know two point stop. Uh, maybe I'll use a thousand shares in this particular case in this particular account, or maybe I'll do like what did I do tonight with that uh, one that was a little bit more volatile, YSG. I forget how many shares I traded on that one, but I know it, I know I picked up some options on that, which might bite me in the butt, but that's okay. <laughs> I could use a good ass kicking. <laughs> so anyway, I will carefully plan those trades and then work diligently to follow the plan. And there it is right there. Plan thy trade, trade thy plan. Maybe we can get somebody to do a little, uh, what do you call that? Needle point us that, you know, and, and we'll put it on the wall. <laughs> now, again, in spite of all my preaching and teaching and publishing an exact plan, on what I intend to do, at least with the service stocks, at least with those published stocks. The next day, I get an email. I didn't take XYZ, is it still a buy? Now it's up two bucks. ABC hit the stop yesterday, it's selling off even more today. I'm freaking out, what should I do? 
I didn't take partial profits in EFG. It's now selling off hard. What should I do? So you need to make sure you're following that plan and not creating a lot of different decisions, which will put you into a state of regret. So let's say you don't take that entry on a stock that you intended to take. Because you're like, ah, well, the market's soft right now. I'm not going to take that one. And then you don't put an order in. You go off to lunch or whatever. You come back after lunch, and it's up two bucks already. Well, now you're faced with a whole plethora of decisions. Should I buy it because it's higher? Should I let it retrace a little bit? And all these things put you into a state of regret. You're going to be in a state of regret more often than not even if you're trading 100% properly, okay? Now, one thing that I came up with, and I've been working on this, and, and I kept thinking, is this going to cause me future angst? Is this going to cause me future angst? And my wife was watching TV the other night and some kind of silly show or whatever, and the guy was like, I forget his name, but uh, he's like, is this going to make future Dave angry, this decision I'm making. I thought that was a good way of putting it because I'm always saying future angst. But is present Dave going to make future Dave angry? And unless, of course, your name is Dave, such as David S., who's here tonight, <laughs> insert your name to that before you take that action. And by the way, you know, I'm just kind of backing into something here. That might be good advice for life. If present Dave answers his wife, honestly, will future Dave regret that decision while he's in the doghouse? <laughs> I take a lot of dares. Uh, <laughs> I probably shouldn't admit that publicly because you guys are going to, we'll all uh, get together sometime and then you're going to be like, all right, Dave, I dare you to do this and I'll probably do it. But um most of those dares, future Dave regrets it. I have a sister-in-law. She's, I don't know how, well, the mom lived in Mexico. I don't know what that, what difference that makes, but uh, she grew up in Mexico. She's, she's American, but she grew up over there. And um, I guess the girl grew up eating peppers, my sister-in-law, and, and she'll like challenge me to pepper eating contest and it'll nearly kill me. And she just chomps away at him. But anyway, so good advice in trading. And now that I'm thinking about it, pretty damn good advice in life so by not following that plan you're going to create more than likely future angst for yourself and if you don't because let's say it works out and you busted the plan well down the road it's gonna not work and it's gonna be much more painful that i can assure you number three i only take trades that trigger an entry now these slides were left over from last year and i thought that they were pretty good so i went ahead and left them in as far as the actual examples and um, I want to make sure I don't go to jail, not go to jail, but get fined or whatever for using clip art. So I, I realized my Stanley D picture, Stanley Druckenmiller, didn't look like it was public public use or whatever. So I made my own little picture of Stanley D. My apologies to Stanley D. Kind of reminds me of Flat Stanley. Anybody have kids know that Flat Stanley? Anyway, he once said, the way to build long-term returns is through preservation of capital and home runs, amen. Now, one thing that's really hard to quantify, as I've said quite often, is missing those occasional stinkers that don't trigger, okay? And it's hard to quantify because, number one, it's a hypothetical, and I guess what would the world be without hypothetical questions, according to Mr. Wright, spell the W. But if you do take a trade, you lose in a trade, that didn't trigger, you've already busted your plan to begin with. So who's to say you're going to exit that trade at the predetermined stop, okay? But say you do, now you're down 2%. Well, you got to make back more than 2% to get back to break even. And the other thing that's hard to quantify, but it's there, is that you are creating stress and you are depleting your mental capital and energy and believe me when things are like they are now you need to be 
very sharp and you need to be on top of your game. And, you know, it, when I get hit with a few losses, especially if I do something stupid, I'm in a bad frame of mind. And I might overlook that little IPO buy at B pattern that triggers right at the close or the next big winner. So vitally important. It's something that I'll, I'm sure I'll come back to quite often. But this was the example from last year. I thought it was pretty good. This was in the trading service. The entry was where the green line is right here. And then you can see it did not come anywhere near close to trigger. And I think last year I said six months from now, somebody's going to email me on this stock. I should search my email to see if somebody actually took this and live to regret it. But as you can see, over the course of the next year or so, or whatever it is, nine months, the stock that I had a trigger up at 20 something dollars a share worked its way down to three bucks and change. It's probably, I don't know where it is now, it's probably bankrupt by now. So there's the entry right there. I was wondering where it was. And you could see this would have caused a lot of stress. So, hey, future Dave or who's in here tonight? Future Mark, future George, <laughs> future John, future Craig. I feel like uh, I'm on Robin Room here. So when future one of you guys or girls thinks about getting in early on a trade, when, when you're not in a front running market, right now it's kind of a front running market, okay? I gave somebody I was talking to on the phone, some a stock and some parameters and he immediately bought it. They called him a front runner. And he actually made money on the trade and I didn't because he front ran it, but hey, we're in a front running kind of market. Just be really careful if you do that kind of thing and make sure you have a chair ready for when the music stops. But anyway, more often than not, you want to, well, you always want to follow the plan. If your plan is to get in a certain point, then get in at a certain point. Okay. Um, a lot of the stocks I talk, well, all the stocks of the service that I just talked about, you can find at DaveLander.com slash archives. I'll put a link in this. And then if you're on the trading service, if you're new to the trading service, I know we've got some new guys and girls recently, take a look at the recent services to get up to speed. I'll let you know right now, flat out, this is a fantastic time. It's not always this great. If it was always this great, you would never see my fat ass again. <laughs> I'm half kidding. But do reserve, do go through those archives. Maybe go back to last fall where we had a few stinkers and then we had no setups for a while like I showed you. And then all of a sudden it started to work again really nicely as the momentum cycle began to kick in. Kick in. All right. Everybody here tonight I think is in the, in the trading is a gold member. But if you're not, I would encourage you to become a member and I promise that I'll make it worth your while. I'll tell you what, the Facebook group has been fantastic. Facebook group is free. Every time I say this, I get a dozen requests to join, but you do have to be a member of DaveLander.com, a gold member at least. And as I often joke, or I'm half kidding, it keeps the riffraff out. And as I've said quite a bit, I've been involved with forums, some of them with some professionals. <laughs> I guess I could say it now. It's like John Bolger's forum years ago. He invited me to be a member, and I was honored. So, of course, I joined. And uh, it turned into Lord of the Flies. And I think he since started it again, but um, I haven't gotten around looking at that. I've just been too busy. But anyway, lots of good stuff in the members page, lots of courses. And I'm constantly adding some things to that. So, good stuff. And here's the other thing too, if you're in the Facebook group and you've gone through all of these courses and the Q&A, and we have quite a few hours of Q&A, you're gonna be up to speed and understand what's going on. And if not, I've been blessed because a lot of you guys are helping out the other guys, which is really awesome. All right, let's go to live charts. Let's spend a few minutes looking for some hot IPOs and we'll take a look at that YSG which might be a mortgage the house type of trade. If you guys wanna start asking about individual stocks, feel free to start asking about them now. All I ask is ask about one at a time, just so I could see which ones I've covered. And then also, I think that's it. <laughs>
normally I say wait until we're to the live part, but I think we're at the live part now. It's been, I'm a little punch drunk. It's been a quite the day. Looking forward to having a call with Namar. All right, let's take a look at, I have a recent IPO list in here, there it is. And there's a lot of IPOs that have come public. So let's just sort these by volume. Now, last week, I guess we'll wait until I get to it, but last week I saw a couple that were setting up and I said when and where I would buy them. And then I did buy them this week. Oh my gosh, this is one of those crazy spots. Here's where I'm kicking myself in the buttocks. I had, I was looking at the warrants on this one for like a dollar or dollar fifty, and I had it written down as an S and G trade. You know, I didn't make a formal plan. I'm like, ah, you know, I'll buy ten thousand. You know, just S and G type of trade. <laughs> and those things went up like three hundred percent in one day. I had another one in the Landry list recently, not to. Talk about the fish that got away, but I think last week we had one ARTC, if memory serves, and it went up like 100% in one day. Well, this thing is too crazy now. Nothing to do there. I am long this stock. I got knocked out. I do have some shares left. I wouldn't rush out and buy that stock right now. PRTR, PLTR, I've played in the past. I played this little breakout back here as a buy at B. Go in and watch. The shows on my website for that one. Now, this one's only two days in, plus it's over $20 a share. So, we're going to have to wait to see what happens there. This one has already triggered. Well, this was above $30 a share. So, wait for the next pullback on that one. Uh, by the way, the I know I say it every week, but my buy it B rule is. They have to be $20 or below. And then in more recent times, I'm looking at stocks lately because everything's so crazy. I'm willing to take stocks between $20 and $30 a share. Now, this one here, I did go long yesterday, okay? And I don't, I didn't get around to put it in the Facebook group. My, apology, my apologies. Usually, I was, I'm pretty good about doing that. Did anyone here take this trade or talk about it? in the group. I could do a we could, I could do a search tomorrow to see. But yeah, I did take this trade yesterday on the close, around the close, and I did exit half of my shares today. Now, I'm just going to kind of go through these and not spend a whole lot of time in each one. Airbnb making new highs, maybe on a pullback, let's see what happens. This is the damn one that was nice little pullback right here and then took off without me. That's the one that was on the Landry list last week. This is the Warren I was just telling you about. It was kind of a nice kind of cup and handle in here. And I figured for S&Gs, it'd be worth a shot. Now, keep in mind that this move from here to here all happened within one minute. So I don't know if I got it. So Geo got in. Okay. Well, Geo, yeah, Geo's back to trading. Good. Yeah, I know Geo had, had, was bummed out because he had exited. Now he's back in. IPOE, I am not long. IPOF, I am long. Okay. Took partial profits today. I'm pretty sure, yeah, this was the one that I said I would buy above 1350 in last week's show. And you know what? Because I said that I would do it, I had to do it. It's kind of like that dare thing I talked about earlier. If I say I'm going to do it, I'll do it to my fault. That was rocket. It's kind of died out. Nothing to do there. Another one of these box special purpose acquisition companies. One, two, three, four. So tomorrow, any close above today's close, let's say 1350 or higher, it would be a buy. Dave, you're gonna buy it. I'm probably not gonna buy it because I'm up to my gills in stocks right now. And I'm up to my guild Spox too. <laughs> but we'll see what tomorrow brings, okay? This one we did play, I think. And the, that was one, uh, it may not have triggered in the service, but it was a buy at B back here. And I did scratch out on the remainder, if memory serves. This is another most Fox making new highs. Nothing to do there for our new trade. And let me just go, let's just go through a few of these. So DoorDash is making new highs. At first, the kid, you know, price too high, they're going to die. And it did, okay? It lost about, what, 40% of its value, 35% of its value. And then it began to take off. Now, let's see, John Z, I think, 
John Z likes to come in here and when they're they're scraping bottom like this and they begin to break out off their lows, he likes to play that move. I haven't wrapped my head around that just yet, okay? And I haven't, I certainly haven't made an official strategy just yet. Seems like I tried it once or twice and failed miserably, but that's probably not a representative sample. But you can see this has made a pretty big run higher, but it's there's nothing to do there because I don't like buying new highs in higher price IPOs. So let's see what happens when it pulls back. Now, Mike says, watch the volume. Never mind, ignore that. Oh, he changed his mind. Okay. Well, IPOs, volume is tricky. And I spend a lot of time talking about volume quite often. Look at that, Spock. Probably a Spock. So you do have to take a look at them. Now, this was one that I thought about buying today, but I went after YSG instead. One, two, three, four, five. Actually, the trigger was yesterday on this one. Okay. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, the range was okay. It wasn't phenomenal. I know Mike is okay with a narrow range on these things as long as they have a, a nest ton of volume. Now, this is the one I actually bought today, and who else bought YSG in here? See, this is a good thing, because if some of you guys bought this without me, okay, John Ross, John bought it. Here's the good thing. If some of you guys bought this without me, in case I get hit with a beer truck, I know that you, know, you guys can live and go on without me, okay? I can rest in peace, right? <laughs> So day one, day two, what happened on day two? It took out the day one high. So we're no longer worried about the day one high. We're going after the new closing high, which in this case was right here. And it just died out, okay? Well, there's nothing to do on this stock until or unless it makes a new closing high as it did today. So what I would recommend, if you didn't get long, going to after hours trading, um, mortgage your house, and Put all your money into this stock, okay? I'm joking. I'm half kidding. No, <laughs> I'm joking. Don't ever do that, especially with these spocks. This one has plenty of volume, so easy to trade. And I actually, in addition to buying stock, I did buy options on it. Which, uh, I'm doing what's called a gamma play. And if you don't know what gamma is, then you need to learn what gamma is. Gamma is the rate of change of delta, and it changes really quickly. So a little gamma play here. There's a saying within the options community, gamma gets you. Well, gamma gets you if you're short gamma. You never want to be short gamma. You want to be long gamma as an S&G trade. If it works, you make a lot of money. If it doesn't, so what? You don't want to do too many of those S&G trades, though. You can get in trouble doing that. All right, nothing to do with this one. It's just kind of died out for a long time. This one's coming off its lows. Maybe it'll set up on a pullback. It still could set up at a buy at B, even though it's a little bit higher price. But would actually have to close above this high. I'm just not extremely excited about it just yet. I might wait for a pullback. Now, remember, the buy at B can get you in as early as a close of day five. And that's a pioneer setup. And like the pioneers, the American pioneers, you either get the arrows or you're going to get the gold. And the chance of the gold makes it all worthwhile when you're going after these pioneer setups. But sometimes that buy at B can take a little while to trigger, as you've seen tonight and on other nights. I am long the stock. This is in the service. Why am I long? Well, I said to buy it in the service. So I had to buy it on my own. It's a nice little pullback. It's taken off. Kind of failed miserably, but didn't stop us out. And then now let's take it off again. Hey, Brett, good to see you. Now, this one's kind of funky. I don't know what all this trading back here is, okay? But, yeah, it could be a Spock. It says acquisition in the name. One, two, three, four, five. We'd have to close up here somewhere. I'll do a little bit more research to see what's going on with that one. That was, v, uh, what was it? VIH. And let's just go through a few more of these, see what's happening. This one's pulled back. It's an acquisition company. Surprise, surprise. It looks okay. Beaky, we're not going to talk about. Hey, look, there's that Unity. Remember I said Unity? Look, we bought it back here. We got knocked, shaken out, unfortunately. Okay, buying it back at around 90. It ran to what, 70, over 170? 
nothing to do here until unless well actually nothing to do here until it rallies and possibly pulls back uh this one's kind of funky looking let's see let's just go through these real quick now some of these where they make that big wide range bar on day one if it's just a little if it's a little too extreme i'm not going to buy up here i'm just going to let it go hey what is that another one of those spocks crsr remember this guy we talked about it a little while ago okay we got shaken out and it's just kind of gone mostly sideways since so i'm not too upset about being shaken out of that one hey look another spock you know maybe on a pullback it really hasn't gone as high that much higher just yet it's only got an hv of 14 okay but maybe on a pullback we'll see this one's straight sideways this one died out this was on a trading service forever this is one of those where I don't want to put rub salt in anyone's wounds because I know some people front ran it. But this is one where we had a very high liberal entry based on the volatility of the stock and it never did trigger. Okay. INAQ, I think I'm long this one. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm long this one. I think I've taken partial profit so far. Forget about this trading back here. Let's see. One, two, Second day, the high took out the first day high. So this is our closing high entry right here. Actually, this third day was a closing high. And then I don't remember. I think I bought it on this day here on the new closing high. And I think I've taken partial profits. Let me shake a mouse. I'll tell you. Q. Yes, I am long on a Q. And I'm pretty sure I took partial profits on that. Okay, nothing to do here. I was long this one. You know, this is one of my shame trades, okay? And I call it a shame trade because on this day here, I saw it was up big and I didn't think about it or whatever. And I didn't take partial profits and I ended up stopping out of this trade at a loss. And you know, somebody was asking about getting better, and I actually been writing about that quite a bit. I've been writing a lot. I just haven't been publishing much as far as writing is concerned because I'm doing two videos a week and and believe me, that's pretty much exhausting. That's a lot of uh that's a lot of videos. But I, I enjoy doing what I'm doing and I think it makes me makes me better, especially if I could if I can make you better, then I get better in the process. And Somebody was asking about getting better and, you know, you just have to look at your mistakes and sometimes you can put commitment devices in place and it doesn't have to be a big, huge thing, okay? Like in a case like this, I could have put a limit order in to take me out of half and on a lot of these IPOs, these these crazy IPOs, especially SPOCs, I'll just put in a limit order and forget about it and all of a sudden I hear a ding. I'm like, what the hell just happened? I got stopped out of something. What happened? And I see that all my positions are still there, but then notice that one's a little bit smaller. I check my phone and see the alert. Like, oh, okay, well, I got paid on that one. Okay, so that's an easy commitment device. One thing I did recently, and where I'm getting, where I'm going to with this, and this is something that I'm going to work into the piece whenever I get around to doing it, is it doesn't have to be something drastic to get better. In fact, it's it's better if it's not. Okay, and that goes along the lines of the kaizen way where you make little little tiny 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 changes an example would be like a a race car designer doesn't lop off the, the back two wheels of a car to save weight but he might he might use an alloy in a certain panel or he might shave a gram here and gram, gram there and after a while it begins to add up so very small measurable changes one little thing that I've done recently, which has saved my buttocks, is between like the market in a minute and fighting fires and website blowing up or God knows what else happens right around the open. You know, wife comes in with a accounting or a plumbing problem, which we don't have as many have now that we're no longer in the on six acres right before the open, of course. But I did the little, what do you call it? The, uh, the bugle call. What's that little bugle they play before they uh, before they bring out the ponies at the track? <laughs> so I have that go off two minutes before the open. So it's like, okay, focus, Dave. Market's going to open in two minutes. Go check your opening gap reversals again if you haven't, or, or for the first time if you haven't already done so. And I'm shocked at how many. I thought it was stupid when I when I put that thing that little alarm in to go off every day. 
And I'll be darned if on many, many, many days, I'm so caught up in fighting one of these fires or whatever, I totally forget that the market is opening. Here the market ding open and then I'm then I'm frazzled. What do I have to do? What do I have to do? What do I have to do? Well, that little bell goes off. I check my ogres. I check my pre-market trading again. I check it often, especially nowadays. And then I'm I'm ready to go. Whereas without that little silly alarm, I might forget. In fact, I know I forget. I know it's hard to believe you forget. All right, let me just go through a few more of these. Tortoise acquisition, isn't that stupid? Because it's a shell company. You get it? <laughs> Quell, I'm long Quell. Okay. This little arrow back here, I got long there. I nearly got knocked out. I may have played this opening gap reversal. I'm pretty sure. I may have had some bad behavior and held that day trade overnight. Okay. But so far, so good on Quell. I am out of half of my shares now. All right, let me just go through a few more real quick. Let's see if we can just find something else in here. Into the box. See, this, there's another spot. Look at that. Let's see what happens on day five. I guess Wednesday of next week will be day five. On that one, nothing to do here unless it pulls back again. I hope this was on a landry list recently because it had a nice uptrend, nice pullback. By the way, that's that's another way of getting better. Now, with 25 stocks on, I feel like you know you can't kiss all the women, and that's why I shouldn't beat myself up for missing that 100% move in a Landry list. But hopefully, I had this on the Landry list recently. You guys keep me honest. But when you see a stock like this that takes off and runs 20, 30 points, you need to say, well, wait a minute. Should I have seen that that stock before? Is this one of my patterns? Yes, it's one of my patterns. Why didn't I take the trade? Well, you got 20 something trades on. You know, give yourself a pass on that. Anyway, let's just see if I can get through a few more. Well, we really don't have any new setups in here, but we'll check back every day. TLS, I'm long this one, shocker. <laughs> now, here's one where I was nearly stopped out. And truth be told, I think on this day here, I almost just threw the towel in. I said, no, Dave. Put in that put in that stop and then go about your life. And then for three or four days, it came dangerously close to that stop and then it took out. Now, trust me, I've been stopped out of many, many, many stocks and then watch them take off without me. But in this particular case, I did not bust my plan and I'm in for the ride on that one. And, uh, you know, what you could do in Facebook, by the way, is you could actually search for symbols to see if I see if me or I uh, see if me or anyone else has discussed it. This is the ALGM first deeper retracement. We talked about this a little while ago. Still long. So you can see we had a lot of act, a, uh, Academy. There's another one. Nice little retracement here. I didn't play this first little run because I couldn't get excited about a sporting goods store, but the technician in me said, Dave, you have to take this pullback here. And one way for me to commit to this trade, again, here's that thing about why I do the educational thing, okay? Believe me, it's a lot of work and it's not a lot of money. And you know, the only people making money are selling BS, and and they're going to jail anyway. <laughs> but but I digress. I'm I'm not being shot on Friday, but if they were bilking people, they deserve to go to jail. False claims and BS, right? ASO up 35% since we bought it. Yeah, yeah, it's a nice little run so far. So for our sporting goods store, you know, it's pretty hard for me to buy a sporting goods store as an IPO, buy a B, but you know. With these pioneer setups, I like to see some sizzle, some excitement there. Couldn't get excited about a sporting goods store, but I said, you know what, Dave, if it rallies, I'll play the pullback. And I did. And I see John did and a few other you guys in here too. So congratulations and some of you girls too. All right, let's pop out to the overall market. And uh, you know, here's one that, by the way, before we do that, here's one I almost bought. But it's like different quote feeds have it as an existing company. And there's just, if I didn't have 20 or 30 setups to look at every day that have potential, I probably would have done a little bit more research on this one. But your buy at B would have been at 19, would have been on this day here, okay? So, but I don't know why it was, I don't know if this is like the Aaron's uh, rental company. I don't know what that is, but 
there were so many other setups around this time. I just didn't have the time to go in and do the research on that one. Anyway, as you see, if you uh, got a, this was in the Landry list today. I know some of you guys took it uh, back here at the buy at B. I just could not get excited about buying silver. And, and you know, I wish I would have now. Buy at B was actually, I think, on this day here on that one. But yeah, nice little move there so far. Congratulations if you took it. And that's the other thing, too. If I could put out things that, that look good to me, but I might not necessarily take for whatever reason. But some of you guys and girls might decide that, hey, that's worth taking a shot. You know, this makes me feel really good. Look at his IPO list. You guys, the, most of the, not most of them, but a lot of the ones that are in these really good trends like the CBC, we were talking about way back here in Facebook. And I am long that stock too. All right, let's take a look at the overall market. I would start looking at charts. I can look at charts forever. I know I'm a nerd. I really am. Proud of being a nerd. The geeks will inherit the earth. I think that's in the Bible. All right, let's take a look at the market. Keep your stock picks coming. So we'll have something to talk about when I get done. S&P tried to rally, came back in a little bit toward the end of the day. I did a little um, plunge protection with the futures. So we'll see how that works out. I carried him home. I don't want to be short futures because I'm fighting the trend, but a little plunge protection, a little intraday setup. So we'll see how that shakes out. If I get stopped out and everything goes straight up, I hit some profit targets and some spots overnight, then so be it. NASDAQ Composite tried to rally come back in, came back in right, right off all time highs. They're still looking pretty good. And here, take a look at the rusty. Look at that. Bam. Tiny Elvis coming out. Look at that. Look at that trend. It's huge. Up 2% today, banging out all night. All time highs with vigor. Remember, not too long ago, every day, it sounded like a. Who's that guy that whines in his movies? Dances with Wolves. The guy that whined for like four hours. I, I could, never, could never watch that again. He's a good actor, but geez. Oh, he just whines and whines and whines. But I was like him, you know, the man's the, the, the rusty's going up and down and sideways, you know. Just took forever for this thing to get going. But boy, when it got going, it got going. Look at that. Look at it. Look at that trend. It's huge. All right. I won't bore you too much and go through a lot, all of these. I know, too late, right? Just want to, a couple of highlights that I talked about tonight's service. Energy, energy is accelerating higher with a little vigor. We're along CLB and CPE there. Metals and mining, ARLP, which neared the profit target today. As you can see, metals and mining doing pretty darn good. And that's without the help of gold and silver, okay? Gold, not looking so hot in here. As you can see, it still looks like a pretty much a top, okay? Kind of a... I don't know what you call that, inverted, a cup top or whatever. Let's take a look at the weekly chart for S&Gs. Yeah, it's a inverted cup and handle on a weekly. So that's a bearish pattern, okay? I wouldn't rush out and short it off of that, but it's looking kind of ugly. Silver tried to rally and then imploded, okay? And that's why I'm having a hard time buying Gato. Uranium, help baby Jesus. Yeah, <laughs> I'm long you, 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 you from today's trading service. Yeah, so far so good. Looking good. You know, some of these uranium stocks are less volatile than the, all the other stocks we're trading. It's crazy. This is definitely a a crazy, crazy market. So just be super duper careful in this market. Silver the commodity sold off recently, pulling back a little bit. To me, that looks toppy. I would leave it alone for a while. Let's see if we can get Bitcoin up real quick. And then uh, keep keep your stock picks coming. We'll go ahead and open it up to individual stock picks or whatever. Okay, take a look at ACP. Let's take a look at, all right, let's take a look at Bitcoin. And then I want to take a look at uh, Ethereum. So what happened with Bitcoin? We talked about this and I know I covered it in my stock chart show. Let me, let me make sure this thing is getting fully shared. So Bitcoin made a nice little TKO back here. I did buy it above this high. I actually got it a little bit early in the pullback. And then I, I bought the second loaf at the high. Felt pretty good for a day or two. Regretted it for a while. And then it took off nicely. I actually took a bigger position in Ethereum at that particular time. And you had a TKO here. Now, let me go back to Bitcoin just for one second. This is what, this is what I was talking about in my stock chart show, which is now up on YouTube. It'll be on my website on Friday the 15th, if, if you want to check there. 
But notice that it pulled back to the 30 EMA. Great little pattern of trade, Landry Light pullbacks. One of my newer favorite patterns, okay? Something I've really been paying a lot of attention to in more recent times. I, as you know, I tend to eyeball everything, but it has been kind of fun since stock charts people put my plug in into stock charts and you can get the plug in for free. You just have to like the video on YouTube if you're watching on YouTube. Anyway, entry above the high, stop below the low, and notice that you had like, oh, how many bars? Uh, where's the thing? 50 something bars. So you had 50 something bars of Landry Light on the 30. That's a that's a serious trend, right? Corrects down to the EMA and not much further below it, right? And that completes the setup for Landry Light pullback. It's also a very obvious TKO, as I said, in the presentation that got published yesterday, it should stick out like a sore thumb. Look at this wide range bar there. Let's let's zoom that in a little bit, see if we can see. Let's go to three months, see if that'll capture it. Yeah, notice this bar here relative to all these other bars. That's a wide, that's a wide range bar 50, right? Widest range bar in like 50. So that is a TKO. I'm, all, I'm asked all the time, hey, you know, hey Dave, is 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 this a TKO? Well, this didn't even take out a two-bar low, right? I, I hear you. It's kind of knockout-ish, but it's not a trend knockout in the spirit of what the designer intended. Now, right here again, you could see it did not come all the way down to the 30. Okay, if you were trading a land, you're like pullback mechanically or scanning for it, this would not come up, right? But heck, that's a pretty good-looking TKO. Once again. How many bars we have in here? About 35 or 34, 33. So you've got 33 bars of Landry Light, and then you've got a wide range bar 34. Okay. That's a TKO. All right. So I did, I think I flipped out Bitcoin for a day trade. I know it's crazy. Boy, commissions are, are abysmal on these things, though, huh? Ridiculous. <laughs> I was counting my money the other day. It was like $100 of commissions. Like, what? Commission? What's that? <laughs> I don't remember those things. So this is Ethereum. I got knocked out here. Actually, I held my whole loaf or my entire trade. I was looking for like 800 on my IPT. And when it was at 800, I put a stop at 700, then it went to 900, 1,000, and so on and so forth. And so I just kept bumping that stop higher in the IPT as opposed to just taking, up, taking off half at the IPT. Now, Bitcoin and Ethereum and all these things trade 24 hours a day, so you could put that stop in and keep trailing it higher. You have to do it manually. I don't know how to do it automatically with any platform just yet. But in something like your stock trading, you can't put in a stop after hours, or nor would you want to, okay? So you can't really do that kind of thing, and you could end up missing out on getting your profit target, okay? But it's something that's open 24 hours like this. You can you could put in a trailing stop. Now, what I will do, and I did this on AL, ALRP today. It didn't didn't really work out, but but I got my profit, so I'm you know I'm, I'm happy or relatively happy. <laughs> it's just like you never fully. It's like I one of my stocks went down today, and I was all pissed off. It's like, well, Dave, you got 24 of them went up. <laughs> no, it went down. I'm mad. Anyway. So nice little knockout move here, and then, like I said, you could you could on an intraday chart. That's what I was that's what I was trying to think about on an intraday chart. Let's say you're getting close to that initial profit target. Well, you could put in a tight intraday trailing stop on half of those shares, and sometimes you get lucky and that stock keeps running, and you're able to squeeze out a few more points on an initial profit target. That's what I was trying to think of. It's been a long day. Anyway, I'm long Ethereum again, okay? I actually got in on a day trade on an hourly, thinking that I would flip out a day trade and then come back here and get in officially on the TKO. And so far it's worked out, knock on wood again. So I'm just gonna hang on to that day trade and see if I can turn it into a longer term trade, okay? I do have a bit of a fantasy in that, uh, of like going in something like Bitcoin or something that's open 24 hours, even Globex futures and taking a little swing trade and then letting that stop widen, widen, widen when the worst that could happen to me, boring some sort of catastrophe, would be to break even on a trade. And that's kind of what I did with this Bitcoin trade. So we'll see how it works out. 
I really don't want to let it retrace back where I got in. I mean, who does, right? But if it keeps moving in my favor, the stop will be far enough away I break even to where I establish once again a free position, which would be pretty cool. If you do that often enough, it, it comes back to Mr. Druckenmiller's preservation of capital and home runs. <laughs> Yeah, I put a picture of me in an arrow coat in the Facebook group, and it was my um, Spock jacket. I said I was going to go with Spock for Halloween next year if these things are still hot. And when I Googled looking for a jacket to put on to uh, Photoshop my head onto, the Australian colony prisoners prison costume came up. I don't I don't know why it's arrows. Anybody know why that, why that is? Is uh, Laurent in here tonight? Do we have a representative from down under? I didn't see Lauren in here tonight. Nobody's from down under tonight, huh? Okay, let's let's hop into the charts before I digress much further. Let's take a look at these setups. Grow for Brett. Yeah, Grow, that's been a great one. And, you know, it's like lately, as I've been saying, you just can't kiss all the women. It's just so many stocks out there. And, you know, somebody's, I've been asked many times before, like in the portfolio, like, what do you do when you run out of money in the, in the model portfolio? Well, hopefully, and I just said hope, but like I showed you earlier, seven out of 11 stocks have hit the initial profit target. So that's half of all those positions are coming off, and that frees up some margin. And then the other thing is, when you get 10 or 11 stocks in there, you start getting kind of selective. And, you know, SPOCs are kind of a different animal on their own. I'm not sure how many SPOCs is the right amount to hold. I guess. A hundred, a minimum of 100, if as long as they're going crazy, and then um, a maximum of zero when when this when this bubble finally bursts and these things. I read a little bit about them. I just don't want to spend too much time learning about them. I just want to look at charts, and I think that's all you really have to do. It's what I preach. But it sounds like what they do is they kind of circumvent the the lengthy IPO process by saying, uh, we're going to just, um, we're just gonna have some money and we're gonna buy something at some point in time. And then the SEC goes, okay, that sounds like a plan. Whereas if you were some other company, you'd have to lay out a business plan, explain how you're gonna make money and all those other things. But a Spock, you just, meh, look at them, we'll buy something. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you know, get a little stamp approval. I was part of a website many years ago, and one of the things we thought we were we were going to go public, but we never we never got around to it. <laughs> Which I probably wouldn't be here at this moment if we went public, because I think it was um, I forget the market cap on Market Watch, which went public right around the same time. Anyway, long story endless. One of the things that was that had crossed our mind or the CEO's mind was to buy up a little crappy penny stock and uh, go public as the website, but that didn't happen. Oh, well, uh, yeah, Grow looks kind of interesting. It's, it could actually use a little bit more knockout, okay? But it's not bad, it's not bad at all. And it does have a nice persistent uptrend to it. It's a little bit on the thin side. And I don't know about you guys, but it seems like lately, you know, you used to be able to trade a stock that trades two or three hundred thousand dollars, two or three hundred thousand shares all day, every day. But lately, it seems like it takes a little bit thicker stock. Seems like these ones in the in the low six figures, the spread can get a little bad. So pay attention to the spread. This isn't bad, Brett. Um, you know, I can't fault you on this. Nice persistent uptrend. Nice TKO move. Again, it could use a little bit more knockout, but yeah, you could probably enter above the high, stop below the low. Not a bad looking stock at all. If it was a little bit deeper, I would give you a high five. That's great. Start the night with a high five. AMSC, AMSC. There you go. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I don't know why I did not put this one on my list tonight. I may have. I did see it earlier. I did like it. I think the only, if if it's not on tonight's list, the only reason it's not on tonight's list is because it has gone. It has had a pretty good run, 
as of late and it's at all time highs, okay? Not that I wouldn't trade a stock at all time highs, but there's other more exciting things at lower levels like all these Fox and all right now. Okay, Mike says it's on the land list. Okay, good, I was crawfishing there. Y'all, you guys know a craw- crawfish, a crawfish walks backwards and swims backwards. So I was crawfishing just in case it wasn't on the landry list. But yeah, that's a good looking stock, okay? And the reason we're not making an official setup tonight is because we've got a plethora of stocks on. But thank you, Mike, for verifying that. EOSE trend knockout for George. Yeah, that's that's kind of interesting. Um, it's kind of spocky looking, huh? <laughs> HV127, that's a little bit on the ludicrous side, okay? So, so consider yourself warned. But yeah, I can't fault you on that, George. Uh, entry above the high, stop below low. So that's like eight points or was that six points, whatever. It's a little bit crazy. So don't bet the form, okay? If you go after it, maybe keep an eye out tomorrow to see if it has an opening gap reversal. That'd be pretty cool if I'm putting my uh, doing the editing tomorrow and publishing. And this thing makes a nice little opening gap reversal. Okay. Any more? Oh, I am uh, B R P R P H F. Okay. This one might not come out. B R P H F. Craig bought the first book on swing trading. Thank you, Craig. Appreciate that. I'll tell you what, if anybody, uh, well, you guys have the books on the back end, okay, for free. But if anybody's watching this, wants my first three books, go to davelander.com slash free book and i don't think there's a hyphen in that but i will confirm it and you'll get a pop-up in this video galaxy digital holding well while we're in impasse i want to thank everybody for attending tonight I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule if you're watching on youtube please like it and if you like it if you don't like it go have no fun somewhere else and feel free to leave a comment or please leave a comment if you have any questions or anything and i do answer all of the questions everybody have a great night uh, you're welcome mark And I'll see all you guys and girls and Facebook, everybody else. I'll see you again next week. David says, great class. Thank you, David. Appreciate it. All right, everybody. Good night.